a little bit of a mess today, aren't I? <laughs> Hello, friends. So, for some reason, this video that I posted over a year ago, people keep watching it. <laughs> In that video, I was following someone else's pattern, but I have been making and selling these for over a year now. And I have majorly tweaked the pattern to make it work better for me. So since that video was so old and it's technically a vlog and not an instructional video, I am gonna make you guys a quick actual tutorial <laughs> for a plushie nut. You can see the one still up there that I made in that video. She's still going strong. There's a lot of stuff up there. I need a haircut so bad. But you're not here for my face, so I don't care. So this tutorial is gonna be very beginner friendly. I'm gonna walk you through all of the stitches and everything. Supplies. What you'll need for this is some yarn, obviously. I always use Karen Cotton Cakes. They have some really fun colors. This is technically a size four medium weight yarn. I will let you see the specs down there. Any medium weight yarn with a four on it or any uh, lighter weight yarn with a three on it. <laughs> I found it works really good for this project. And I would recommend using whatever hook is recommended on the packaging plus 0.5 millimeters. So this one recommends a five millimeter hook or an H slash eight hook. Um, and I am using a, oh, just kidding. I guess I'm using a five millimeter hook. Sometimes I use a five and a half millimeter hook and it, it also turns out good. So I guess just follow whatever's on the packaging. And then for the end, we will also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle. All right. And now you don't have to look at my face anymore. All right, so we are gonna start off with a slip knot. So if you've never made, actually, hold on. Okay, that lighting is a little bit better. Okay, so we're gonna start with a slip knot. So the way that I personally make a slip knot, there's tons of ways to do this. Take the end of your yarn, grab it with these two bottom fingers, wrap it around your pointer finger once and then wrap it around again so that it makes this X on the top and just secure it with your other finger over there. Take your hook, insert it under the first loop, hook the second loop, pull it through and twist back up. Slide everything off your finger then you have a slip knot and you can pull the short end. Whoops. You can pull the long end to make it tighter. So you don't want it too crazy tight because then we can't do anything with it. Make sure you have a tail of at least a few inches so that it's easier to weave in at the end. Before we get going any further, in case you are a beginner beginner, I'm just going to show you how I'm holding the hook and the yarn just in case you need to hear that. So I like to hold my hook like this and use my pointer finger to guide the loop on the hook. Everyone does it differently. And then for the yarn, I like to grab it with those three fingers again, loop it over my index finger, and then use these two fingers to guide the loop as well so that I have maximum control over what's going on on the hook. Also having a finger on the yarn helps you control how tightly you're making the stitches so that they're not too loose or too tight. How you do that is completely up to you though. This is just how I do it. So we're gonna start with six chain stitches. To do that, we just loop the yarn over from right to left, use that hook to grab the loop and pull it through the bottom. And if you're working with a hook that is more slanted. Let me find you an example real quick. 
if you're working with a hook like this that is very thin at the top and goes all the way up, make sure you are pulling every loop all the way down at least once because if you keep your hooks up if you keep your loops up here it's going to become very tight and not at all how you want it so just a little miscellaneous tip there so we have one chain and i'm just going to start over so you can follow me all the way through six loop over and pull through for one two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six loops behind us and then one loop still on our hook. Now we are going to create a closed circle with these stitches. So we're going to join both ends together with what is called a slip stitch. So you're going to find this first set of V's, or first V, I guess. You're going to take the hook around and insert the hook through each side of the V. And then you should have this third loop that was behind the V should be on the other side. So insert through there so that you have the two V loops and then the one single loop. Yarn over again, and just pull through all the loops on the hook. And now you have a little ring. At this point, you're going to do four more chains. So one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do a double crochet, which is a very common stitch but I am going to walk you through it. So you're going to yarn over the hook again. This time you're going to insert the hook into the middle of the loop, just in the big hole, you don't have to worry about the V's or anything. Wrap the yarn over the hook again, pull that loop up through, pull your loops down so that you have three now, yarn over, pull through the first two lo loops and come back up. You should have two left and then yarn over and go through the last two loops. And there is a double crochet. You're going to chain two and do one more double crochet in this circle down here. Trying to keep my eye on the camera focus, but sorry if it goes out a little bit. So for the double crochet, we're going to yarn over the hook, insert it into the circle, yarn over and pull up, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So now it may be hard to tell, but Basically, we are making a giant triangle. So this original circle that you made will be the back corner of the plushie net, and we're going to keep making rows that get bigger and bigger, and we start each row with a chain four. We also start each row by turning the work like that. So just flipping it horizontally. You can do that before or after the chain. I like to do it after the chain. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna, so after the chain four, we're going to do a double crochet into this circle now. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And between each double crochet in this pattern, we're going to do two chains. So one, two. We're going to do another double crochet into this next circle. I had to start that one over because I was doing it too slow and I got messed up. Yarn 
We're going to chain two again. And this time we're going to do a double crochet into the second chain stitch. So this is that chain four from the last row. And we need to do a double crochet into the second stitch. So one, two. So we will yarn over and instead of inserting it into this space, we're going to insert it into this V. And then it's just the same, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Basically, we are repeating this over and over again until it's the size you want. So I'm going to walk you through a couple more rows of this. There will be timestamps in the bottom if you want to skip straight to finishing it off, because we will go over that too, but I'm just going to demonstrate a few more rows for you so that you can follow along if you are still confused. So starting each row with four chains and then turning the work horizontally. So this chain four essentially represents a double crochet and then the two chain spaces or chain stitches, if that makes sense. Because we can't make a double crochet that just kind of starts from nothing. So we have to make two chains for the double crochet and then two chains that go across before we start our pattern again. And there will always be one double crochet on each side, whether it's actually a chain or a double crochet, and then one in each hole so that it's always expanding. So we did our chain four and we turned. So now we can do a double crochet and then two chains, double crochet and two chains. This is so much harder to do going slowly. <laughs> A double crochet and two chains and then we are out of spaces to double crochet in so we're going to double crochet in that second V again. I don't know how well my camera will focus, but I'm going to try to do a super up close row in case you need that. If you are a beginner, it's also a good practice to pull some yarn out of the skein and have it kind of laying loose because that helps you control the tension better. I'm just going to do a few more rows off camera just to get it a little bigger. Just for the sake of demonstration, I am not going to make this full sized. When I do make them full size, I like to do between 50 and 60 rows. If you do 50 to 60 rows with these Karen cotton cakes, you should be able to get two plushy nets out of one ball of yarn. 
The amount of rows you do will also vary if you are using a different kind of yarn. You will be doing less rows if you're using a thicker yarn and more rows if you're using a thinner yarn, so keep that in mind. All right, so for this tutorial, I am just going to stop here at about eight rows. And you can see if your tension is good by turning it on its side and seeing how close to a 90 degree angle you have. You want to get as close to a 90 degree angle as you can because that will allow for the most support for your plushies. If you find that your triangle is going really wide like this, you might want to tighten up your stitches a little bit. And if it's, I <laughs> can't really demonstrate it, but if it's a sharper angle than a right angle, you might want to loosen up a little bit. Okay, so now we are just going to finish off this little mini one so I can show you how to add a front edge. You could just keep it like this if you want, so this part is a little more advanced, but it's very easy. So instead of chaining four at the end of the row, you're just going to chain one and then turn your work horizontally like we've been doing. And what we're going to do is place a single crochet in each stitch along here. We're going to do one single crochet on top of each double crochet post. And then we're going to do two in between. Or to do a single crochet, it's very similar to a double crochet, but there are less steps. So we're going to start with this first post that is right next to your hook. So this one might be a little tricky. So this is the chain that you just made. And we're going to work on this second V that you see right here. So without yarning over, just insert the hook into this second V. Then we can yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, and come through both of those loops. So a single crochet is basically half of a double crochet, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and so we need to do two single crochets over this space. And some people would recommend going into each of these V's directly, but I think that is too hard. So we're just going to do two single crochets into this space. So insert the hook into the space, pull up the yarn, yarn over, and pull through. So insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through. But for the double crochet spaces, we will need to go through that top V. So go ahead and insert through that top V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Two in the space, one in the post. Aren't it slippery? <laughs> Two in the space, one in the post. I usually work with metal hooks and not plastic hooks, but I do like the thicker grip on this hook, so I have to deal with the slipperiness as an exchange for the comfort of the hook. We're just going to do this all the way across. When you get to this part, remember this four chains counts as two chains in the double crochet. So you're still going to do two single crochets for those two chains. And then you're going to do another single crochet in the second stitch up. All right, and then you have a nice kind of cleaner border across the top there. And then this is what I do for my products. I like to add little bobbles. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It is a little more advanced, but I, I think you can do it. So on the end, we're going to chain four again. 
turn. And then we're going to do a slip stitch in the first V on this row. So we're going to insert. And for a slip stitch, we just insert, pull up a loop, and instead of yarning over again, we're just going to keep pulling this new loop through the old loop. Like that. Then we're going to do one slip stitch in each of these two single crochets. So insert, pull up a loop, keep pulling the loop through. And be careful not to make these too tight because it's easy to make slip stitches too tight. So in each stitch that's on top of the double crochets, we're going to do, I'm not sure if it's actually a bobble stitch. It could be something else, it could be just something that I <laughs> made up, so bear with me. But we are going to insert into the V, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Yarn over, and instead of pulling through both loops, we're going to just pull through the first loop. Yarn over, just pull through the first loop. Yarn over, just pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. So you're essentially going to have this chain of three and then this stitch, and it's going to look a little weird. Um, but it will look better with this next slip stitch. So then we're just going to do two slip stitches in these single crochets. And then we reached another post, so we're going to do the same thing. So insert the hook and pull up a loop. We're essentially using this new loop to chain with, and we're forgetting about this loop until the end. So we're going to chain one, two, three. So three chains, and then yarn over, pull through all the loops. And then we got a slip stitch, a slip stitch, and then we're going at it again. So pull up a loop, chain three, yarn over, pull through both loops. I don't know why I'm losing my voice. <laughs> slip stitch, slip stitch, and then another bobble stitch, so insert, pull through, chain one, chain two, chain three, yarn over, pull through both loops. This is one of those times when using your middle finger and thumb to hold the work and keep it steady is very helpful because this stitch can get confusing if your stitches are really loose. If you accidentally pull through both loops when you're doing a chain, all you need to do is just kind of reverse and pull that loop back over there. So I did two chains and I just need to do one more. I do that all the time. And this is our last bobble stitch. And since there's no stitch to slip stitch into next. I like to find these two loops that are on the side here. It's kind of hard to see. And just slip stitch into that. So this is what it looks like from this side, but if you turn it over, it has this kind of like polka dotted ridge to it. And some of them you might have to pop them out a little bit more. And there you go. That is the design that I usually use. This is the point where you could cut the yarn, make sure you leave about a 3-4 inch tail, 
I'm not going to cut it right now because I'm actually going to undo this and make it full size. But once you cut the yarn, all you're going to do is yarn over one last time and pull through and just keep pulling until the end of the yarn comes through and just pull it a little bit to tighten it. And then this is where your tapestry needle comes in. So you will have two ends to weave in. This needle is probably a little too big for this project just for demonstration purposes. But to weave in ends, you want to go through the work a few times in any stitches that you can. So just weave it in and out a little bit. Pull it through, but not too tight because you don't want to change the shape of the project. And then I like to just go back and forth probably undo this and make it a little prettier but just go back and forth a few times and then cut the extra tail off so that it's nice and secure in there and then to hang up your little plushy hammock you're going to use this back corner loop and then the two corner loops up front I like to use push pins or nails depending on how strong I need to make it. I would recommend using the nail or push pin and inserting it between two strands instead of just through this hole just to make it a little more secure into the wall. You're going to want to hang the back corner a little higher than the front two. So this guy will be up here and the two corners against the wall over here. And now I have the tiniest, cutest little plushie net. All right, now you gotta look at my face again. Isn't this so cute? I might actually just hang this on the wall and put the tiniest little guy in there. All right, so that is how you make my version of a plushie net. I really hope this tutorial was easy to follow if you do end up making this, please show me somehow on Instagram. That would be cool. You don't have to, but it would be cool. You can DM me or you can tag me in your post or something like that because I would love to see what you guys make. If you did find this tutorial helpful, let me know in the comments if there are any more um, projects that you would like a beginner tutorial for because I would be happy to do that. And yeah, I'm sorry I look like this just having one of those days, but I still wanted to get a tutorial out for you guys. So take care of yourselves. I hope you have a great day. Uh, drink water, get lots of rest, and I will see you in the next one.